Good morning, church. This is Pastor Ann Dawn. I'm coming to you from the Parsonage in Cozad, of course, this morning. Um, and it's a joy and a pleasure to be with you and back in worship this week. I'm so thankful that Eric was able to record and, and provide you a, an amazing message last week um, that tied just in perfectly with our worship series this summer. Um, so I pray that you have been finding beauty in all the places you find yourself this summer. Um, Doug and I just got back from vacation, of course, um, and we had a wonderful time away. Um, just really, it felt like a bit of normal in amidst everything else, um, but it is really good to be back with you this morning. Um, as we get started with worship today, I feel like I'm doing this for the first time all over again here. Um, we're going to get started with our opening worship series. The spiritual part of ourselves is a divine abyss. It is a dimension that is not touched by words, thoughts, ideas, and feelings. Our bodies were made for perceiving the beauty of the world, a flower, a kiss, a stunning and vibrant green hillside, or a newborn baby. And yet all the art in the world cannot capture exactly what it feels like to experience the divine nature of these things. The path of unknowing is to both savor what the senses can take in, but also wonder at the mystery of unfathomable depths of even a single atom.
Divine goodness, holy God, pause us for this moment. Bear us up in this time. Hold us for eternity. We revel in your wondrous works. We grasp for adequate ways to sing our praise. We seek to be lost in your beauty. And all of God's people said, Amen. Today, we're on another search for beauty. I think we're finding out that we don't really have to look very far to see the beauty all around us. And yet, if we take a moment to look far, far away, there is an opportunity to see even more beauty. So I'm wondering how many of you have ever gone out on a clear night and just laid on your back and looked at the stars. 
Do you know what we see when we do that? Millions of stars. And it's like the longer your eyes adjust to the darkness, the more stars you can see. Some of the most amazing things we get to see are stars. And because of a telescope called Hubble, um, this Hubble telescope has been taking pictures close up way out in space. And we know just how incredibly beautiful the stars and the planets and the galaxies really are because of this incredible piece of technology. And they're so far away, these galaxies and these stars that we can't take in the full beauty just on our own. Um, sometimes things are so amazing. The things you see in the sky are really hard to describe. And all we're left with is just this sense of, wow. And that's really all we can say. But thank goodness we have that word, wow. This week, I'm gonna invite you to find a way to make stars at home. Um, maybe you're going to make them and hang them in your bedroom. Maybe you're going to hang them in your windows. Um, have an adult maybe help you um, or do this with your kiddos. Do it with a neighbor. Um, but find some ways to hang up some stars at home. And then I'd love to see pictures of them, of course. Um, but every evening when you get ready for bed, I want you to look up at those stars and say, wow. Every time we say, wow, every time we are experiencing that sense of awe and wonder, it is an offering a little prayer to God. God who created all of the beauty of all of life, of all of creation. So pray that way with your stars and with all the beauty around you this week with a simple wow. Let's pray. God of goodness, thank you for all of the amazing things you have created to help us understand and see you more. Thank you for awe and wonder. Help me to praise you with all of my wows for the beauty of the earth. Amen. So names were really important. Uh, in the ancient Near East. Names described attributes of a person to whom that name was assigned, and names were often changed when something important happened in the life of this person that shifted their story and changed the essence of who they are. The psalmist often gives glory to the name of God. We're going to hear that in our scripture today. And yet to name God is really difficult, for there is no one word um, that can describe the fullness of our God. In today's scripture um, passage in our Lexio Divina experience, the psalmist describes the attributes of God for which praise is given. We're going to hear about justice and compassion. This is unlike any other feel, unfeeling, life-denying idol that claims to be a God. This this is about a Holy Spirit that lives and moves and breathes, not only in the beauty of the creation, not only the beauty that set creation in motion, but even today. It is an indescribable presence that warrants the simple description of beautiful name. Alleluia, praise the name of Yahweh. Sing praise, you who serve the Most High, who stand in the house of Yahweh, in the courts of God's house. Alleluia, God is good. Sing praises to God's name because it is beautiful. Yahweh, your name stands forever. Your fame is told from one generation to the next. For you do justice for your people and you have compassion for your faithful. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but they can't speak. They have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. There is never a breath on their lips. Their makers will come to be like them, and so will all who trust them. House of Israel, bless Yahweh. Priests of the temple, bless Yahweh. Attendants of the sanctuary, bless Yahweh. You who revere Yahweh, bless Yahweh. Blessings from Zion upon Yahweh, who dwells in Jerusalem. 
Alleluia. So Doug and I are literally just back from a delightful stretch of vacation days. And this sermon series really helped me make a beautiful entry into my enjoyment of our days away in some spectacular places. We started our time away um, by enjoying a fabulous visit with Doug's brother and his family in Loveland, Colorado. Beauty of the mountains, the breathtaking beauty of Todd and Tina's backyard, and their overwhelming hospitality set the stage for a really great trip. From there, we headed to the western slope of Colorado. We made a temporary home in Fruta, Colorado at the foot of the Colorado National Monument and home to some world-class areas of bicycling, which we also took the opportunity to do. There's actually a 23-mile route in the Palisade area through a variety of fruit orchards and vineyards, and we had the pleasure of riding that um, riding that route on a spectacular summer day. It was a variety of fruit orchard. It was the most perfect opportunity um, to soak up and reflect on the beauty of this earth. We began worship today by praying, Wondrous God, prepare my spirit to see and be beguiled by the beauty of life. This sermon series, Beguiled by Beauty, is all about the wonder and beauty of God and all that God has created. To be beguiled is to be charmed, enchanted, and fascinated. I love the idea that God is beguiled by beauty as we are. Do me a favor and take a look at the creation stories this week. Notice God's care and delight in God's craftsmanship each and every day of creation, or, or find those stories of God designing the tabernacle with gold and silver and bronze, with stonework and woodwork. Beauty is a portal, a portal to our God. A portal um, is a gate, an entrance, and, and I've always thought of beauty as a doorway where we as humanity can gaze upon the goodness of God. But if God is as captured by beauty as we are, beauty can be the very place where we actually encounter God. We gaze at God in awe and wonder, and God gazes back at us in wonder and awe as well. This isn't to say that we and all of our humanity don't regularly break God's heart, but to have a complete picture, as complete as we can with our limited understanding of God. We have to see God is love, God is in love with us and beguiled by us. I think it's harder to imagine that I think it's harder to imagine that <laughs> than imagining God's disappointment or even God's absence at times. But God is love, and God is in love with humanity, and God sees beauty in each and every one of us. When church council meets, we always open with a devotional scripture and a brief check-in. Rarely do folks have any idea what I will be asking of them in that moment, but at our next meeting, we're going to open with the question, how are you staying in love with God? If, if that's unfamiliar language to you, um, staying in love with God is one of John Wesley's three simple rules of, of soul growth and of soul care. So the three simple rules are first, do no harm, second, to do good, and third, to stay in love with God. This week, I've been overwhelmed by the joy of celebrating our marriage the years of love and life that Doug and I have shared over the years, a love that's grown exponentially and deepened beyond belief, a love that reminds me that love is generated by and lavishly given by God. All good gifts, including the gifts of love and endurance and beauty, can all be traced back to God. The psalmist tells us that even God's name is beautiful. Alleluia. God is good. Sing praises to God's name because it is beautiful. Yahweh, your name stands forever. Your fame is told from one generation to the next. For you do justice for your people and you have compassion for your faithful. 
in this psalm, we see and hear that beauty isn't to be loved for beauty's sake itself, but as a conduit for encountering the goodness and justice and compassion of God. Another phrase, another scripture, the idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak. They have eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear. There is ne'er a breath on their lips. Their makers will come to be like them, and so will all who trust in them. The beauty of God, who God is, can't be separated from God's compassion, a word that means to suffer with. We can't praise God's name or see the real beauty of God if we don't enter into God's compassion for all people, for all of creation. And if we aren't willing to share the suffering of our fellow human beings, you know, compassion and justice are two words that the psalmist uses to describe the beauty of God. Justice, meaning rightness, fairness, integrity, and accountability. These are all biblical themes that tell both of God's nature and of God's expectation of us. Beauty isn't just in what we behold. Beauty is in how we live in the world and how we live with one another. Our Greek Orthodox brothers and sisters are especially attuned to praying with the beauty of God through the use of icons, scenes from the life of Jesus, historical events from the life of the church, and, and portraits of the saints throughout the ages. These icons are made of paint or mosaics, embroidery, weaving, carvings, even some just engraving. Um, I've been deeply blessed by the engagements I've had with the Greek Orthodox tradition. I've been shaped and formed by extended periods of time with the brothers at the Schuyler Monastery and Retreat Center. And the practice of praying with icons was interesting and yet kind of strange to me as a spiritual practice initially. I had an opportunity in seminary to visit a Greek Orthodox church where we saw and experienced the iconography, these life-size pictures of Christ and the saints and the apostles. That they were painted on the walls, some with gold leafing, um, and they were just absolutely breathtaking. The candlelight and the pageantry of the worship, the, the vestments and the singing, and the welcome to us strangers among them. I was immersed in this sense of beauty and so in love with God. By the time I had another engagement um, with the Greek Orthodox faith was at the two-year academy for spiritual formation. And we had the opportunity to have a faculty person for that week we were there um, to learn from him and to worship with him. Um, and I will never forget his encouragement for us to, to pray with our eyes open to see the beauty of God all around us. It was not my usual encounter with God in these moments, which is probably what made it most memorable, but I was simply beguiled by the beauty of it. You know, this year has been the strangest of times in my nearly 50 years. Pandemic, sheltering in place, physical distancing, this righteous and no longer containable fury over racial injustices, this lack of moral and compassionate leadership at every level, wondering if there is light at the end of this tunnel. And yet, in even this time, we can let the beauty of God be a portal. We can let it be a portal to God. We can let it be a portal to peace, an entryway into compassion for others, an introduction, an entryway into justice and to hope. Sing or dance or paint or draw or journal or plant tomatoes or handwrite notes. Maybe you unclutter a closet. Maybe you pick flowers or deliver a meal to, to someone or gather eggs or build a birdhouse or make collages or meditate or look at the stars or stop and smell the roses. Experiment with how creating and noticing beauty in your life can help you stay in love with God 
in love with your life and centered in the wonder and mystery of God rather than lost in anxiety and impatience. One of my favorite authors, Anne Lamott, says the three most important prayers are thanks, help, and wow. Beauty, wonder, and mystery, all aspects of God, all gifts to us to be experienced and enjoyed can move us to speechlessness, to simply say, wow. In these trying times, many of us have used or at least thought of many expletives to describe how we're feeling in any given moment. And maybe wow hasn't been one of them. In this week of looking for beauty around you with the purpose of staying in love with your God and in love with your life and in gratitude for all with which we have been blessed. Let wow be the word you use when you encounter God's beauty, when you create beauty where you live. Wow. Amen and amen. Usually, our prayers throughout this series have invited us to an open-eyed experience of looking around. But there's also the experience of looking around inside the mysterious depths of our own imaginations, our own memories, our own experiences. And so today, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, um, to simply allow whatever images come to your mind as you hear the music, whatever comes to you. Just let this movie in your own mind be a part of your prayer. Not questioning, not trying to figure it out, not analyzing it too much. Just let it be and hold it together as we hold a time of silence it together in between the verses of the song today. Looking, whether outwardly or inwardly, is a noticing of the depths of the beauty of your life. 
and the creator of that beauty is present with you and within you always. Let us pray. When you're tired and feel you can't get through, uncertainty comes over you, just look around. When your problems seem too much to bear, unsure if there's someone who cares, just look around. Whether stranger, neighbor, family, or friend On each other in tough times we can depend Look around, kindness, love is ours to share We can see it everywhere Though it might seem like forever Look around even in the darkest night, things are gonna be all right. We'll get through this together. Just look around. Sometimes it can be hard to see Life is full of possibilities So look around Each new day is such a gift Embrace it and the life you live And look around Outstretched arms and many helping hands don't give up on all your dreams and all your plans. Look around, kindness, love is ours to share. We can see it everywhere, though it might seem like forever. Look around, for even in our darkest night, things are gonna be all right. We'll get through this together just look around look around just look around let's join our Pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as the song says each and every week, we'll get through this together with outstretched arms and many helping hands. You know, friends, regardless of the alarming things that we see happening in the world around us, the compassion that we see blossoming in this time is a real gift your mission offering throughout the month of August 
um, is dedicated to meeting our mission share goal for 2020. Support of our local mission shares is a true expression of faith. For all of these funds address not only current needs, but future needs. So as such, they are the substance of things hoped for. In meeting our mission share goal, we are making tangible the, um, our confidence of the things we hope for our church, for our community, for our conference, and for our world. Thank you for making a difference with your August mission share offerings by giving this month in August. So this week, I always have an invitation for you for a new practice. And this week, I'm gonna invite you to a new contemplative practice um, to add it into your daily life in some way as a way of opening yourself and offering yourself to God in a deeper way and thereby training your spirit and your heart um, for compassion. Um, this week's ritual action um, is going to be a practice of curiosity. This might be one of my favorites. I want you to set a reminder each day to spend some time exploring some phenomenon that you don't yet know about. Um, today, you know, it might, the Hubble telescope might be something that you think about exploring a little bit. Um, the Visio Divina practice, the um, experience that we had during worship today, um, are the Northern Lights. Maybe you're going to learn something about them. Maybe it's something about human behavior that you see happening around you. Or maybe, um, maybe it's something that you just simply have never thought about looking at before. So whatever you choose, as you do so, um, allow your mind to take in the wonder, to contemplate the information slowly as you go, and open your heart to the wonder of it all. You may want to put your note nearby. Um, the more we know, the more we know, we don't know. Wonder and awe that leads to the care of creation is good for the beauty of the earth. And now, Let's add our final song to the song of creation that's already in progress all around us. Oh Lord, my God, when I know Sing. 
receive this benediction. The world is so varied and beautiful. Seek wisdom wherever it is to be found and may the goodness of our creator, the companionship of the Christ and the insight of the Holy Spirit infuse your life now and always. Amen. Have a blessed week, everyone. Take care. God bless.